Hey everybody. So uh, I was setting up. I just set up just a little bit ago, and uh, I'm up here at Highland Park. And my friend Jean just came by again. We met last week. Yes. And uh, let me turn this off here. That might help too. Okay. So Jean's here, and uh, we met last week. He stopped by, and we got talking about art and life and all kinds of good stuff. And I said, you got to come back, and we have to do a live video about everything that we are talking about. Matching tanks. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're totally coordinated for this. So we're going to talk some art and uh. Yeah. Well, not for me, not for me, but just your presence in general to show what people. And did you make me? No, I, uh, my, my friend did Okay, so we're going to see some Haitian art. Yeah. So I wish I had a selfie to do it way yeah, up here. Way out, yeah. I got to do that way, I guess. Okay, so I got to stretch <laughs> yeah. out my arm. Okay, so show us what is what's going on here. Uh, we got some handmade, some handmade sandals from Haiti. Those are some art we have. A friend of mine made those. So beautiful. We are like I'm gonna turn around like this so you can see it better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, those are some handmade by Haitian people in Haiti. Um, we got different colors, different style yeah. they make. Uh, we got a couple more different colors. Now you are going to show me how, how these like tie in the back. This is so cool. So how you tie it on the back is you open it that way. Look at that. And after you put your feet in, you set it up and you hold the two and then you tie it up and it's coming exactly oh the way gosh. your feet are supposed to be. That and then so the wheelie cool. resistance of uh, walking everywhere. Even you get wet, it's not going to be messed up. Look at that. It's really thin, but it's got a lot yeah. of traction. That's really neat. Yep. Those are handmade by Haitian people. That's we get some nice art, some nice thing going on. It's so beautiful. So let's check yeah. these different colors out. Yeah, different colors. This is kind of mixed in with my paintings, guys, because yeah. we're just we're setting up here at the park. But this is really a different. I uh, love this. This is this like yeah, a yeah, like a carpet. Yeah. It's not carpet like when you walk on that, that make your under your feet smooth, yeah. like hurt or anything. Yeah, comfortable to wear anywhere. Yep. That is so neat. Yeah. I just love that furry feel. Yeah, that's a furry feel. Yeah. So what is this material here? Uh, this, this, uh, this is a type of the um, different, of, uh, what do you call that material? Like, I forget the name, I'm sorry. Is it like a cotton or like a silk it's kind of? Like it feels... li 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 set. It's not oh, like a lisset. Oh, like an acrylic. Acrylic, yes. Yeah, I got it, got it. Okay. Yeah. So that's really, that's really tough. That'll yeah. hold up. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love these. And if you want, you can try your one on your feet. Then I've got then... huge feet. I've got huge feet. I'd be, I'd be lucky if I fit into like that. That's probably like a nine, and I want yeah. like a, an eleven. But okay. I'll try. I'll try it after we do this video okay. for sure. Yeah. Because um, I'm not even playing around. You know, I'm gonna try those sandals. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> yeah, it's those always awesome. good. So, so we got some good thing coming, and uh, my dream right now is uh, to bring Haitian art to Pittsburgh yeah. and like let people see. Uh, people from outside the United States, they have some skill. They may not have enough thing we do have right over here, but we do have skill. We believe in working hard. We well, believe in make things. Let's, let's move some of these things. We can sit, let's sit down here. Let's sit down here and we can really talk and I can, stretch, I can stretch my arm out. So, um, one of the things that we were talking about when we first met, you were telling me, um, first of all, um, what it was like growing up in Haiti. And then you were telling me um, about your family and how you have gotten involved in art. Can you tell us, can you tell everybody about that? It's really... Yes, uh, art is a part of my life because my dad, my aunt, Muriel Leconte, and my dad, Fanel Leconte, they are some great art from Haiti and they have some good serve all over the, all over the place, all over the world. And uh, we have some good things for my family. And uh, this is something that I like, it's on my blood, and then I can stay away from that. Yeah. So I do draw, I do paint, uh, trying to keep my mind together, make it happen. Well, what was it that your dad always told you? Was something about that, like trusting, trusting your dad, trusting your movement? Yes. Remember that? Yeah. Uh, a good art is uh, what you feel, what you can bring to make somebody understand what you feel. If you could do that, it's a good art. So 
whatever you think, make it on a picture, on a pen, let somebody understand. So you know, we, were, we were looking through your art and it was like literally looking into your own imagination because the shapes that you were doing and the designs that you were putting together, you, I hadn't seen those before. So it wasn't like some, something that you were, you weren't copying like a tree. You weren't um, saying, okay, I'm going to take this scene and just going to replicate it. I mean, it was everything that you, that you do. And that's where I think you and I were really connecting because I do something similar when I pour, you know, um, I, I don't really try to recreate. So yes, I don't recreate either. Um, I prefer to bring my own tank my own um, imagination and go somewhere mm -hmm. and bring it to life so somewhere anybody can go but i go and bring that back to normal life then people can understand what my feeling are what my brain are and what is about art do you think that growing up in haiti um, that helps you keep your own voice and keep your own imagination and how so for me i don't yeah. think i can born anywhere else than haiti yeah uh, I'm not regret one second that I was born and raised in Haiti. And there's a lot of things I learned on life. And that's the only reason that I'm here today. And that's when I know where I was growing up, that's the best place for me today to be. But when I come to the U.S. and I go to different places before I come to the U.S. And I have, uh, I see a lot of things. But the best part for me, my fire, my desire is where I'm from, Haiti. I think I think a lot of people get different ideas of what it was like. Because you hear a lot of things in the news that probably aren't as accurate as they should be, probably for one reason or another for their own interests. But um, can you describe what it was like growing up in Haiti? What, it, what it's really like? Like what was it like for you? When what I was when I was growing up in Haiti, it wasn't bad for me and it wasn't too good for me because of uh, my family. They coming from um, the middle class mm -hmm. and things going well sometimes bad sometimes but it's an experience of everybody each one of me each one of Haitian who's growing up in Haiti who raised on the good way or the bad way uh, like easy life or the uh, hard life mm -hmm. I salute them as a soldier if you survive because you're fighting good that's uh, the beauty of my country because we are survivors. Well, you were talking about how, you know, unlike America, what you, it takes like a ton to be right at the beach. You know, you've got people that spend millions of dollars to just have beachfront property and then it turns private. And you're saying like, it's not really like that there. You can, everyone really just enjoys the, the open air. And yes, everybody enjoys the open air. If you have money, some people have money, they buy a um, place by the beach and build a hotel and a beach and everything. We do the beach and make it for like uh, tourist people, people come from all over the places, you can come hang out for vacation. We have some good place in Haiti, then somebody can enjoy the yeah. moment. And natural stuff all over the place. Yeah. Everything, food is natural, drink is natural, everything. That's what, see, that's what is killing me, is like, you know, it's, it's funny how when, when people hear about going to different countries, and because the food's all natural, and you can't just go to like every single CVS, all of a sudden it's considered labeled poor, but actually it can have the richest food and the most, you know, untouched land, very clean, like having real food, that's sort of important. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You know, and um, I, I think that's something that, I don't know, as Americans, we're, we're struggling because you got people that will spend, you know, cheap money, they'll get junk food. They'll, they'll, yes. get, they'll get junk food. My arm gets tired. <laughs> I, I, might, I might have you hold this in a minute. Yeah, okay, I understand. <laughs> I'll let you uh, that. Uh, yes, for that, natural food is the creation of God, and uh, that's the natural thing is good for our bodies, for our mentalities, all together. But for when you eat like anything, fast food and stuff like that, somebody made those. They put different stuff on it to make it last longer yeah and if anything is good don't last too long right anything would last <laughs> yeah. more longer you want to you want to hear a crazy story so get this so um i went on big i went on like a weekend vacation um like i think it was back in april so peter and i went and picked up a whole bunch of food from from costco okay so we go into this cabin where and um we had, my dog was with us 
and I sliced up the apple, put a slice in Diesel's bowl. Three days later, I noticed that the apple had not gone brown. Three days. Okay. That means you have some something you on it. it. Exactly. So then you keep them for for longer. Exactly. So I looked it up, and come to find out, they now have a GMO apple that will not brown, no matter how long it is. So um, we clearly did not finish eating that batch of apples. <laughs> I understand that. I understand that. Yeah. 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 But uh, natural food, natural juice. It's really healthy and it's good for the body too. And that keeps you really healthy every day. But going to anything who can, who have like conserve on different type of whatever it is they put on to make it last longer, mm -hmm. that how long is gonna take you yeah. for digestion to be get away if from it, that. if it ever really does yeah if it really does you know and then how does it also there's there's all kinds of arguments now, I, I try to be as pure as possible I mean people that know me on, on the Facebook or in real life know know that that's sort of my MO and I'm a big proponent of that sort of thing because I see the results I see the fruit of it literally you know um, so it is it's one of those things where like does it really actually change your DNA does it change the way that you think I mean even as simple as saying, you know, we talk about imagination and art and, and trying to think of your own ideas a lot and, and really have hope in walking in faith every day. I mean, that's what we do. Yes. You know, I'm out here uh, literally putting myself out here and I don't know what's going to happen any day. But you know what? Every single day there's something amazing that happens, like, for instance, how we met. Yes. And all these interesting people that you can, they come into your world just by setting up on a street corner. Yes. You never really know. But that's the, that's faith, and if you're feeding fears, which I think junk food is, you know, because okay. it's like emotional eating. You know, when they say like you're you're stressed out. Well, if you're constantly feeding fears, it keeps you from that kind of lifestyle. It keeps you from walking in that kind of faith, and I think also it can impede your your creative mind. Yes, yes. To be able to tap into certain things. Sometimes, and we give you headache. Sometimes oh, yeah. you not even sleep well because. Oh, yeah. Too many chemicals in your stomach, and sometimes you feel like a little bit dizzy, and uh, you don't know what's going on. Yeah. And you feel like you're not, like your normal life is not together. So, so what was it like for you? Like, first of all, how did you get to Pittsburgh? What was the journey of that? Like, how that all came together? And then, like, how does, how do you see the differences? Or how, how are you kind of navigating? Uh, before I come into Pittsburgh, I used to be on Florida for St. Lucie. That's where I used to live for three years. And it's a different type of life and a different type of uh, vibration of people, of uh, mentality, um, how people live, all those. But it's a different life for me on Pittsburgh than Florida because there's a lot of things that I see here or different how people treat people. I've never been to this before. And how people are greedy, how people are selfish, how people are like ignorant. And they can never also been. they can also lose sight of community yes. in a sense, just like they do. Just like being individualistically decent, you know, yes. like not always looking for the divide or the issue, yes. but just you know looking for the connection or looking for the just general you know humanity. You know, I mean, when I was growing up in Pittsburgh back in the day. You didn't walk by someone and not say hello. And I remember I first moved to DC, it was right after college. And you know, I'm walking around Georgetown, I'm like, hey, hi, hi, hey. And everyone looked at me like I was schizophrenic. <laughs> they couldn't understand yeah. why I was being yeah. so, like, what is wrong with her, you know? Yeah. And um, unfortunately, I feel like that's the nothing. Um, yeah. You know, people walking around, like New York City, you know, New York City, how many people are there and they're all lonely? But yet, if someone actually reaches out and says hello, they think they're crazy. Yes, because they lose that that part of like it's respectful education. They lose of that because uh, people scare of everybody. And if you do yes. something they don't understand, yes. they think you're crazy. Yes, yes, yes. And fear, if you don't do fear. something they not believe on, they think you don't know any better. So true. It's so true. Well, it's like it's like you know. I notice uh, the the thing that really gets me personally about fear, like generally instilling fear in a child, and they can go their whole life living in this belief of fear. A perfect example are, are pets, like yes. a dog. 
Now, you know, me growing up, I always, I mean, obviously, you know, cer certain animals you want to stay away from. You just know they're probably not too safe. But in general, you know, it's really beautiful to have a dog and have that real connection. And I've always loved having an animal. And it makes me so sad. I would walk my dog. He recently passed. But I'd walk him down the street and there were people. And Diesel was like the sweetest, happiest dog. And he wouldn't hurt a fly. Except maybe a squirrel. <laughs> he did like squirrels. But, um people would come at and, and they'd be terrified out of nowhere and it's just you know it's like it's like who taught them that who taught them that they couldn't connect with an animal because they had to feel fearful no matter what not because the animal showed showed a reason like a logical rational reason to be like oh okay i better stay away from that particular dog it was like no all dogs are going to hurt me and you think about well what if someone is raises a person to go all people are going to hate you yeah. All people are going to think you're the worst person in the world. They're always going to react their whole life like that. Okay. For me, my thinking about that is if you don't like people, if you don't respect people, mm -hmm. if you don't care about people, you always feel they are your enemy. Yes. Even they not even care about you. Yes, yes, yes. You're always afraid it's of like people reverse, yeah. because you know you hate because people. Because that's where you are. Yep. So you can't so, imagine other people would like you because you're in your reality, you can't accept that. Yes. If you cannot, yes. that's another thing. Yes, that is a big truth. That is a big truth. Yeah, that's well, exactly. Like, you, know the, you know the old saying like, uh, liars always think they're being lied to. Yes. Cheaters always think they're being cheated on. Yes. Um, you know, thieves are always think they're getting stolen from. Oh, what is that? I don't know what that is. Let's pop off. Right, we're gonna get rid of that. What is that? How did that happen? What? Yeah, I just popped. Why is it doing that? So Kali. weird. Okay, I think we're back. All right, we had a little technical difficulty. Hold on, I'm gonna walk. Well, he's uh, John got a phone call. So um, anyway, I don't know. Something popped up on my phone, and uh, it took a second to get off. But you know, basically, what we were talking about with people is you know, liars think they're being lied to. Thieves always think they're they're getting things stolen from. So I think some what John and I were trying to say is like, are you ready? Okay. So we're basically trying to say is, you know, just be wary when someone's trying to throw some hate at you, you know, or try to make you think that someone's a bad person. Usually it's because they're probably the person that's Sex doing some really some... bad yes, stuff. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, you know, be aware of that. My arm is not as long. Yeah. I'm going to try to do this. But, um, no, it's a really good point. And also, you know, I think there's a there's a beauty and, a, and sort of like a, a, a mental freedom when you don't accept that kind of reality and so therefore you walk around really being able to see things as they are um, and then I think it just does help with our art too yes. because you know with with art and I've had so many conversations with um, with really great artists all over the place the, the biggest thing is being honest yeah if you're honest with yourself and uh, you know what you do you respect what you do you respect what you say to people and uh, that's that's where the art starts. That's where the art starts. But yes. it's like, but people, even if it's a subconscious thing, it could be as simple yes. as like a line that someone draws, like Picasso. He didn't do, you know, things that were like, uh, you know, Michelangelo. Mm -hmm. But people still responded because when you're tuned into a certain beauty or a certain truth or a certain whatever that is, it's almost like on this subconscious energetic level, people know that that's beauty. Yes. Because that's what you're you're honing into. You know, and I think I think no matter what kind of art that you do, it, it doesn't have to be like somebody else's. It's just your heart yes. needs to be right. So your movements reflect that and people can respond to that and go, this is beautiful. This is honest. This is real. This is true. Yes, because you cannot lie to you. You cannot lie to art because the art is your presentation. Mm. Whatever you've done, that's you. That's you. You represent yourself on the picture, on the art. So if you lie to the art, that's when you lie to yourself. So if you sell or 
give somebody uh, a lie paint that's mean you lie to yourself first mm. and you lie to your identity so that's why it's always good to be truthful with yourself so so what are you what are some of the techniques that you do to kind of get yourself aligned before you start do you, do you have like a certain re regimen that you do before you start drawing or what are some of the things that you do to get yourself uh, in that space before i done uh, before i started off anything i make sure i got a little music on mm. and it had to be so quiet and then let me leave the room i am right now and go search for something that nobody ever see before and bring into life so that's the way i paint i don't like to paint when like my phone keep ringing people keep calling me and then oh, disturb yeah. me or somebody knock on my door hey steven so, hey no i don't like that that's why i started to draw all the time start to 11 to 5 o'clock in the morning when everybody's yeah, right. living, keep me connected, and then when I'm done, I'm going to sleep. Yeah. And then I can come with something else. Yeah. yeah. Because there's some, there's something you see, and because somebody disturbs you, you lose that forever. You will never see it again. Mm. You will never see it again. That's why you make sure then when I do that, I'm somewhere private yeah. and quiet, me and my music, and keep me connected, relax. Let all do everything like everybody who treat me bad for the day everything i'm going through for the day i make sure i come in like clean we set mm. my mind we mm. set my soul yeah. and then we relax and come up with something then to make my day happy and everybody who see what i done happy so i know you're gonna have another video not too not too long ago and i'm gonna bring all my art yes. all my design and everything and you can see you each see one it. of them mm -hmm. and you see what i'm talking about yeah because love is a uh, life is about loving yourself mm -hmm. show everybody what you can do what you are about and then that's the way you keep going if you don't mind to fight for yourself you still gonna be able to help somebody fight so my name is stevenson leconte and uh you can check on me uh we have some good thing coming soon and I promise Pittsburgh, I'm gonna have a, a, a showroom of every art of Asian, different purse, sandals, everything. Then you can check my website and then from there, you see what we have. And I appreciate everybody on Facebook, one love. And then make some comment. Yes. Your love is one <laughs> and we are one because well, we are human. One right. love again, thank you. That's right, thanks for, for doing this. This is really good. And there's one thing, there's another question I think you'd be really good at answering, and that's for people that are stuck in perfectionism. Okay. What, what kind of advice would you have for people you know, that are trying to be creative and they get stuck? They're afraid to do their own movements. They're afraid of originality. They're afraid of, of that idea of perfectionism. What, what's some good advice that you have for that? My advice for that is going to be art, whatever you do. It will never look good for you until somebody see it and if you believe on what you're doing you not have a shortcut on what you're doing and you put your mind your soul all you to represent mm -hmm. what you're doing and keep that love that heart that uh, that idea don't let nobody put you down ten people can tell you yes. what what are you doing yes you lost your time don't force nobody to understand you. Mm -hmm. No. You can't. If it's not understand you, it's not the right person for you. Yes. Let them go. And when the right person come in, and they're going to ask you, how could you do something like that? And that's where your star is going to be shining. And you would be surprised where you're going to be today. That's awesome. That's my advice for anybody who's trying to do something, and people keep putting you down. Yeah. Yes. You know why he put you down? He think you're going to let him behind. Yes. He don't want you to leave, to stay behind with her, with absolutely, the person. Absolutely. Do not let that go through. Keep going, and then don't let nobody put you down. It's Believe so on true. your heart. Believe on yourself. Make it happen. Fight for what you want. Nobody will give it to you. Fight for what mm -hmm. you want. That's exactly. my advice to anybody. That's the best. Yep. That's the best. And it's so true. So many people put their, um, their permission on the wrong people, mm -hmm. you know, and you don't, you know, if they, if someone doesn't get you in the first place or they don't even have your best interest at heart, why in the world would you ever put yourself in a vulnerable state to ask them if, if they like what you do? They're always going to tell you they don't like it because it's a control thing, yeah. <laughs> you know, or sometimes people can be fearful 
of, you know, they're fearful of your freedom to, to try because they don't allow themselves to try. So always keep that in mind too. Yes. Um, so the, the people that you really want to listen to are those that are doing what, what, you know, what they love to do and can honestly give you some feedback. You know? So I think that's really important to have those folks in your life. So yeah. anyway, all right, so I guess uh, we're gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna give you guys a quick tour of what it looks like up here. So uh, this is what's happening. Some of these paintings here you guys have seen before, but I did do some new ones. I started getting this whole idea of bouquet paintings, like little mini, little mini bouquet paintings here. Um, last week, see there's some, there's some more of the sandals. I'm gonna try those suckers on, these are so cool. Um, but a friend of, friends of mine got married and I did this bouquet painting for them. Oh, we've got art, hold on. We've got some new stuff here too. This is what Jean brought. Now, is this something that you did? That's some of my. Uh, is it? The night. Here, let's put let's put it down the ground, and this way I can I can get like get a flat surface mm -hmm. on it. We can really see what this is, what's going on here. This is really beautiful. Are these oil? Yeah, this oil. Wow. So you were saying when you brought some of your work, you had to take it off its frame so it would go through customs. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that's why it's loose. Yes. This is awesome. Oh wow. Look at that. That's gorgeous. 